Welcome to another video on OpenShift. In this video, we'll talk about how to use environment variables and also secrets and how to pass them into the application part. So let's get started. Watch my earlier videos on how to set up CRC, the code ready containers in your Mac environment. And also more uh, other videos on how to deploy uh, a pod with volume attachments and things like that. So in this video, we'll focus on configuration map. It's a term used in OpenShift and Kubernetes to handle environment variables, how to pass them into your application pod, and also secrets. There is also another form of environment variables, but they are encrypted uh, data. You may not want to uh, show them uh, visibly so they'll be encrypted and then stored in the secret and then it will be passed uh, to the application part so now let me create a namespace to start with so this is how i create a space and now i'm going to switch over to the I'm already on that uh, project. And so the first thing I want to do is um, set up an image stream. I don't want to go into the details of this because my other videos have details. Show you the image stream. Main stream got created and now I'm going to import a build configuration. Here is the build configuration. So this is the build configuration I would like to set up and it contains most importantly the URL of the GitHub page where I made an application. That is application I'll be using for this demo that will be using uh, an environment variable right or not. So more on this in my separate video. So let me import this configuration. So as soon as I do this, as I explained in my other videos, let me do get parts, waiting for the build part to complete its job the status of this pod should be completed until that date the pod is initializing it is basically downloading the source code from github and then building it it will set up a temporary a docker file and it will create an image and then for the github application and then it will insert it into the image stream that i created in the previous so let's watch this by looking into the build pod logs so it is still doing its job creating all the artifacts that are needed to download source code from github as you can see the build configuration pod it is trying to download the source from github and then it is trying to set up a temporary internal docker file all the steps one two three four five so far are the docker file contents so now the build is complete and it successfully inserted the built image into the image stream. So here it is, the build job completed. I need this image registry URL for later purpose. Copy it. Now the next step is um, let me do a few things uh, just to keep this demo running. Uh, watch my other videos for more information. 
I'll be creating a persistent volume and persistent volume client. So you anyway. So here is a persistent volume directly TV data with that client. Let me insert them environment. Done. So now is the secret. Let's take a look at the secret how it is maintained in. So I wrote this secret dot yaml file. It's very simple. It contains a name and then the corresponding namespace, and it contains a couple of secrets: the username and password. And look at them; they are encrypted. They are not visible. This is the purpose of creating a secret and then. Uh, using it later on in the application part, but how do I how did I create this secrets? So to demonstrate that, let me decrypt them and then try to encrypt. Them. So let me decrypt the first secret. It is the hyphen name. user hyphen name it as dxcnr look at the, the second secret and decrypt it password so how do how do i encrypt user hyphen name and the password into some garbage looking so a64 So these are the encrypted data. But as you notice, the encrypted, the newly encrypted data does not match with what here. So that is one of the hallmarks of cryptography problem. You should not be able to predict the, the values. So based on the cryptographic principles, you encrypt, decrypt, and then if you try to encrypt again, you should get a different entirely different. But the decrypt should work. Decrypt, decrypt should go back to the original value. That's the idea. Anyway, so this is how the secret is maintained in a YAML file, and I will be inserting them into my. So done. So the later on, in a few minutes from now, I will be using this secret when I deploy a pod, and inside the pod, these two secrets will appear like environment variables. So that is about a secret and now let us talk about environment variables so here there are two types of environment variables you can create in openshift one is you can put them in a config map here is the config map yaml it contains four environment variables they are uh, in the form of a key value pairs name for this config map and this one so this is one type of environment variable uh, that you can create in OpenShift. So let me go ahead and then insert this. The other type of environment variable we will see uh, that is the deployment configuration. So let me open this deployment configuration. So this is the deployment configuration I will use to deploy my image, the image that I created in the previous step by the build pop let me make sure I have the image stream URL one second I copied it to the clipboard right? and that I will have it or it let me copy it again then open the deployment configuration Replace whatever I have before with an So now let us take a look at the deployment configuration where the secrets and the configuration map and the environment variables.
So here is the container definition. And in this container definition, I have a paragraph called A and B from, and it contains the config map and secret names in it. So this is the secret I just created, and this is the config map, map I just created. So along with these two, I can also create an environment variable not mentioned in the uh, config map, and that is here, env paragraph. I simply give a name and value, key value pairs. So you don't have to insert your environment variables all in config map. You can do it outside of config map inside the pod definition. Now let me show you something interesting. One of the environment variable we have in the config map is the, is the OSCA cert data. I want the value of this environment variable to be automatically copied to a file when the pod deploys. So this is a very handy uh, cool thing that you can do. Let's see how it is done. Once again, I have an environment variable defined in config map and I want the value of this environment variable to be automatically inserted in a file somewhere in the pod when I, when I create a pod, when I deploy a pod. How do I do that? Generally the pod um, definition includes a section called volumes. These are the volumes that will get created when the pod is deployed and one of them is the persistent volume claim that, that we already did. Let us ignore that and pay attention to this one, the my app config. This is the volume definition and the value for this definition should come from a config map and that is this particular key. And where it should be inserted into the pod file system, here is a file name openstack.crt but in under which directory so for that we need to see where this volume definition is consumed my app config here is a volume mount section under the specific container and here we simply say hc config the mount path so this means when this pod is deployed there will be a file called openstack.crt under hc config directory and that file should contain the value defined in the config map it should contain so data let's verify all that so let us go ahead and then deploy this um, pod so the deployment configuration is created and the deploy pod is running and when it is completed we should see a deploy um, pod an application pod let's wait for it to there it is application is now container creating that we need to wait for the deploy pod to go into the complete state and this application pod, my flask app old one SZ6FZ in running state. Let us wait for that. So there it is, it is done. Now let us examine uh, various things. Let us uh, get inside the uh, inside the VM, the host VM. How do I do that? look into my earlier videos on this but let me anyway so this is the ssl code is a user id this is the ip address of the vm used as a host for this open and now let us go into empty directory and I should see a file yeah. in a file 
these are. This is the persistent volume and volume claim and thing that that I repeated in this demo. Explain it all in my previous. So now let us go inside the pod and look at the secret and um, configuration variable. <coughs> so for that, I'm going to be doing OCRSH. This is the application pod I just deployed. I'm in. Let me look for the username. There it is. There it is. So these are the two secrets that got created as environment variables inside the application pod. So the application running under this pod can make use of them. Think of them as parameters into the application. Now what about others that I defined in the config map? Let me do this thing here. So these are the four variables created, config variables I created in my config map and pass them into this pod and they are now. And remember I also did one more environment variable outside of config map inside the pod configuration. I think call it as my key. There it is. This variable did not come from config map but directly came from the pod. So that's all I have. Oh, one more thing. I wanted to show you uh, the file. Let's see config file file call open stack there it is and it contains the, the date so that is same as config so it is a really cool thing that through this environment variable you can even create a file and put the environment variable value inside that file all done by uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift for you very so that's all I have and hope you enjoyed this video and I will be producing even more videos for other to explain other aspects of OpenShift thanks for watching bye for now